All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the um, this June 29, 2022 special meeting of the Amherst Massachusetts Conservation Commission. Um, let's see who we have present. We only have two items on the agenda tonight. Um, one is to uh, move forward on an enforcement order at Zero Tuckerman Lane, and the second is a brief conversation of our conservation land use policy, which kind of gets at the mission statement of the Conservation Commission, something that we've been tabling for months um, that it would be good to take a next step forward on. Um, so unless I don't have any other updates that we can talk about now, um, Aaron, is there anything else that you wanted to bring up before we jump into the hearing? Okay. No, ma'am. All right. Um, so with that, I don't think I have to, so it's an enforcement order. I don't have to open anything. Um, I see that Dan Lewis is here. So I should bring him in, I'm assuming, Aaron, um, and let us get, get him, let him give us an update. Correct. Yeah, it's completely at your discretion um, if you want to talk about it first, if you want to bring him in first. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I would say you okay. should definitely allow some time for, um, you know, for him to to speak if he'd like to. OK, OK, well, then maybe I'll just set the groundwork by saying that I think that the enforce the proposed restoration plan is sufficient and um, a good faith effort has been made to kind of meet our original requirements on the enforcement order. Um, commissioners, have you had a chance to take a look or do we need Aaron to share it and walk us through it? Aaron, would I, you, I are it. you, go ahead. I'm looking at it. Okay. <clears throat> um, does anyone have any specific questions? Would it be helpful to screen share and take a look at any documentation? I, 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 have, I have one brief question, uh, and that's for Aaron. How many trees were removed in the beginning? Yeah, so that was, uh, Michelle and I spoke earlier, and that was the one sort of question that I felt like remained unanswered. Um, but I will say, say, that, say this, and obviously, you know, I think Dan should should address it as well. But in my um, experience, that you don't want to over plant. So let's say thirty trees were removed. Um, they're proposing, I think, to replace twelve. I'm just I, I'm pulling a number out of the sky. I don't know exactly how many trees were removed, but just based on the area that was cleared, um, I think that the number of trees that they've proposed seems reasonable. And I wouldn't want to over plant to the point where the trees are killing each other trying to grow. Okay. Um, anyone else, any other questions or concerns? I do think that this looks like it meets our original requirements and will be a sufficient and market improvement over the existing site. Um, so I'm really, I'm looking at it right now and I don't see any concerns. Um, so commissioners, if nobody has any que specific questions or concerns, I'm just, if it, it's all right, I'm gonna give Dan a chance to address the commission and ask any questions and then we can move forward. I think a couple of conditions that we wanted to have were um, notifying Aaron, um, let me double check. <clears throat> um, setting a date when the restoration work should be completed and require an inspection um, by the wetlands administrator once the work has been completed. Um, so I think we should get Dan in to see what his prediction is for the timing of this work so we can set a reasonable kind of target date. And I think there was in the, um, and I can just do a quick screen share to look at it, but I think in the narrative, it did state a potential date for the plantings. Oh, it did, okay. Um, June yeah. 30, June, no later than June 30th. 
so S September 31st was the planting date um, yes. that was yeah. noted, but there was other other benchmarks as well um, for installing the stakes at the 100 foot buffer line. Yeah. Um, and then planting uh, the seed mix on July 15th, by July 15th, and then the tree planting September 31st, which for the tree planting seems reasonable. I just had this conversation earlier today because especially with conditions being what they are for rain um, yeah, and, really and dead of summer is not the time to be planting trees. Right. So then the date by Michelle, I see your hand. Sorry if that's been up for a second. Um, the day by which we would ask this to be complete is September 31 then. Yeah, that's what they're offering. I was, I think that the commission should, when they make a motion to approve this, just state in addition to, you know, the um, narrative and the plan that have been mm -hmm. submitted that, um, you know, just to punctuate those dates so that it's clear um, and then have an inspection after the fact. Okay. Okay. Um, Michelle, did you have a question, comment? I was just wondering if, um, so we have a, Every year, 50% um, success rate criteria. So, just as somebody that's watering perennials right now, um, does it does it apply to everything or just the trees? So, so like the grass seed mix, it's the same thing across the board. Is a 50% um, success rate? Okay, just clarifying. Yeah, that's how I read it, Aaron. I'm yeah, like, and I, I think that if you guys wanted to punctuate that as well in, in a motion, that that would be fine, like just to, to state that um, the commission expects that over a three-year period that at least 50% of the trees and ground cover is successful um, and certainly would be helpful to, to water it or, um, <clears throat> yeah, I would say to water, so, you know, to water it and maybe they're they'll have construction or water on site to be able to do that. So are there construction consulting or other responsible for the whole process? Having a hard time hearing you, Larry. I'm getting feedback. Sorry about that. I can go back and change something. I've had some problems with that recently. Anyway, can you hear me now? Staticky. Uh, sort of, maybe just go for it with, if we're all on you. How about now? That help? Okay, I turned down the volume. All right, is, is, uh, is Larner Consulting responsible for the whole project, carrying it through to fruition? Well, it would be the owner, um, I, and you know, you, oh, you're talking about like overseeing the plantings and stuff like that, Larry. Um, well, let's. Why don't we check with? Why don't we check in Dan. with Dan on that question and, like, yeah. you know, give him a chance to talk. Yeah, Dan, sense. if you're listening, I'm gonna promote you to panelist if I can. Larry, you should mute, mute yourself too. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think I'm a um, co-host, oh, Aaron. Sorry about that. Gotcha. Should be set now. Okay. Are you there, Dan? He's muted. Dan, you're muted and we also can't see you. I don't know if you want to contribute at all. Oh, oh there we are. Perfect. There he is. Gotcha, hello. Hi, hi there. Thanks for making time for this. No worries, thank you. Um, have you been following our discussion? Yes, I've okay. been following it just sitting here in the dark. Okay, <laughs> okay. Okay, awesome. Um, so I think we're thrilled with the effort on the restoration plan. It meets all of our requirements and we really appreciate that. Um, Thank you. We had a couple of clarifying questions. I think we've sorted that out. Um, 
and just are going to make it very clear, make some things very clear in emotion, but nothing um, in conflict with what the restoration plan says. Okay. Um, are you guys going to, is your team going to oversee the restoration planting and kind of watering and care? Or do you think you'll hire a like contractor to do that? And we're no. just wondering, so Aaron knows who to coordinate with. Yeah, we'll oversee it until the home is turned over to the uh, the homeowner and then they'll okay. oversee it from there. Okay. Okay. So that answers your question, Larry. Um, yeah. And Dan, I think the motion, I think we'll just clarify the um, September 31, 2022 yep. Yep. Um, deadline for the restoration plan to be complete. Right. And then ask that upon completion, you notify Erin so she can do an inspection on the site. Yeah, that's um, right. Okay, great. Um, and then Michelle was just clarifying that 50% survival over three years applies to kind of everything. I think yeah. that won't be a problem with grass, but just um, make sure that, that yeah. we're on the same page on that. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. That okay. should be enough. Okay, great. Is there anything else you wanted to ask us or any other questions? Um, no, I mean, as far as the building permit itself, that shouldn't hinder anything with this meeting at all, right? Because it's outside of their jurisdiction? Yeah, no. All right. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. So I guess commissioners were looking for a motion to what is it? Uh, we got to approve the restoration plan and kind of close the enforcement order, Aaron. Is that? Yes. So the motion would be, and I'll, I'll sort of read this back, to um, approve the restoration plan for Zero Tuckerman Lane submitted by Larner Construction on June 6, 2022, as well as the um, associated um, plan that was submitted with that restoration plan. And as conditions, uh, the um, full planting plan would be completed by September 31st, 2022. Um, an inspection to notify the um, wetlands administrator for an inspection upon completion and um, an expectation of 50% survival over a three year period of the plantings and ground cover on the site in the clearing area. Do we have to make that motion? What about the enforcement order? Do we have to quote this as separate? So, um, so should you, uh, um, approve just, the restoration then that would basically um does it what, anyway what, what that means what that means is that essentially you're they're they're in compliance as far as the submission of the restoration plan they just need to they need to um complete the uh action items basically to um Got and it. but but considering all of this the site is in compliance currently and coming into compliance so that the enforcement order can be closed out um at the end of at the end of september okay great we well, make a need to follow through exactly yep. yeah i'll make a motion to accept the restoration plan from larner consulting that we will have the plantings in by september to say 21st 31st 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 2022 with the um, expectation to have um the plantings to survive for three years 50 percent survival rate for three years and that uh, the wetlands administrator will be notified upon completion of the plantings. I second. Can't do that. I can't. I'm, I know I can't. I'm just saying. All right. So we got Fletcher on the motion, Michelle on the second, voice vote. Michelle? Aye. Larry? Aye. Andre? Aye. Fletcher? Aye. And I'm an aye. Awesome. Thank you, Dan. I, Good just luck as, out there a, this summer. <laughs> as a matter of interest, I saw a bear uh, about an hour ago uh, crossing Henry Street and going right over the tracks toward that property. Wow. A young, young dispersing bear. They're everywhere. They are. They are. Bears they are. everywhere. Yeah. In South Hadley, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you, Dan. Have a good yeah. night. Thank you. Appreciate it. <clears throat> All right, and then, oh, Michelle. 
Can I just ask like a procedural or a remind me question? Um, when, if the house sells quickly, which it probably will, the homeowners will then be responsible for this three-year success rate. How, how does that get conveyed to them like legally and um, communicatively? Um, that's a great question. Um, I'll probably end up having to reach out to them. Uh, that's generally like in a situation like this. Usually like if there's an order of conditions or an enforcement order has been recorded on a deed that would trigger them to be notified. Um, in this case, obviously, I don't, I don't think that extent is necessary. You know, we'll see the house being constructed. We'll see the house going up for sale. And um, yeah, so I'll, I'll just sort of monitor the situation and reach out to them um, after the sale and just let them know that that, that area um, is being restored and make them aware of the situation. I mean, as also, it would, it would be great if the builder could make them aware of it, but um, you know, I'll make them aware if they're not. Okay. I have seen houses that are in construction up for sale. So I just didn't know like how I don't know, the, the real estate transaction would convey this condition along with it. Just, I don't know, I just want to put that out there because it's a hot housing market. So things can happen quickly. And I'm not, you know, sure that the seller will necessarily convey the information himself. So just interested to know how that's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, generally, like I sort of have a list of enforcement follow-up cases on my list that I'll sort of make the rounds on and follow up with and check in with the owners on. So I'll just follow up with them and, and let them know. Okay, thanks. Permit yet? Sorry, Larry, can you say that again? Does he have a building permit yet? Not to my knowledge. That's not our, not our zone. Our own, did we just lose Fletcher? Looks like it. All right. I think you just asked for a minute. Yeah, I don't think he liked Larry's uh, question. <laughs> I, th I think he signaled he just need to step out for a second. Oh, okay. All right. Um, well, let's, we can catch Fletcher up, but let's keep this show moving along. Aaron, uh oh. If it was on our agenda for 7 30, do we have to wait, Aaron? No. No, it's not a he it's not a hearing. Um, it, okay. This is pretty informal. Okay, just double checking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so it, conservation land use policy. Yes. Yep. And if it was a hearing, we would like if it was a a, a, a legal ad and a butters notified and whatnot. But the, um, this is this was just sort of a an informal discussion scheduled. Um, okay. So. Let me share my screen. Um, so there's there's two two documents, and uh, this is so this is consider this to be sort of a, a first glimpse. Now I've um, I'm exiting full screen, so I can't see any of you right now. But just for the Everyone sake of it, computer is it on? What's up? Somebody say something. Can you guys see this? you can see it okay okay sorry you guys are all muted and i can't see your faces so okay yeah we can okay. see it we can okay. see it beautiful okay sorry i just want to make sure okay so um just to give you a sense just really quick a snapshot of what happened here um earlier this year we became aware that um so you guys are all aware about our land use application process. And when somebody submits a land use application, generally speaking, it's for like an event or a series of events um, that occur. And, but there are occasions where somebody like submits a land use application to use a piece of property for a given purpose. And in this case, a, um, an applicant had submitted back in 2017, long before I started an application to use Amethyst Brook for a program with children to like do like nature education. Um, they, it started out as an after school program a couple days a week and was functioning fine. Um, and then over COVID, uh, 
the COVID period when schools were out of session and parents were, you know, needing things to keep their kids outside and active, um, the program became more active, shall we say, it became more of a daily program, an all day program. Um, and so in the course of working and, and we're still working with this individual because they're trying to get all of their necessary licenses and permitting through the town to continue to operate. Um, we had internal discussions and decided we really need to have like a more cohesive, holistic land use policy for all of the um, conservation land to incorporate the purpose, the, how the Conservation Commission kind of generally sees conservation land and manages conservation land, just like regula regulations in terms of like what's allowed, what's not allowed. Um, information, you know, and, and this has evolved to include a lot more than originally expected. Like I had hoped that this would be a one or two page document when this started. And as it evolved, we started to realize, oh, wait a second, we've got agricultural restrictions and we've got encroachment issues and we've got liability issues and we do agricultural licenses and um, we may want to do forest management in the future and we have community gardens now and we have land use applications, we should roll that in and just general licensing, we should roll that in as well. So you can see that as you start to unpeel the onion, layers reveal themselves and it becomes necessary to make it more comprehensive. So that's, that's basically what this document currently sort of invibes, but it's still a, um, it's still in, you know, we're still editing it, we're still modifying it, we're still making changes. We want to finalize this, we want to um, get this, get you guys eyes on it, get your feedback on it, get comments on it. Um, especially now that we've wrapped up the bylaw regulations, this is going to come to the forefront. I know we already took a stab at the mission statement and we can come back to that if you want to, but um, I will just sort of roll through this and give you guys a little more depth on it. Um, so mission statement, uh, conservation land regulations, the idea of this being um, the original purpose of conserva a conservation commission being created in Massachusetts was for the management of conservation lands. Prior to the inception of the Wetlands Protection Act in like the early 70s, um, the Conservation Commission Act came into effect and that was basically um, for conservation commissions to be able to manage land. So we thought it was important to include that um, and what the purpose of that um, legislation was for everybody to understand, for you guys to understand, for the public to understand. Um, and then rules and regulations, um, and, and you may have seen these, and, and again, these are still sort of in flux and, and this version that we're looking at may be very different from versions you've seen before. We've tried to really streamline these, to modernize them, to update them, um, and there are more changes that need to be made here. But previously it was like no loud radios allowed on the trail. Uh, if you're listening to your Walkman, uh, keep the volume low. You know, it's like all these things and it was, it was kind of funny. It was like, you know, it dated them kind of. Um, so we tried to remove those elements. There's, there's a lot of things that we get a lot and there's a lot of information on the town website that I've been trying to remove and update. But like, for example, we used to allow camping on conservation land, but then we started having problems with people sort of setting up tents and living in the woods and or um, having, you know, fires in the woods and cooking and trash and all this kind of stuff. So the rules have definitely changed and transformed and evolved over the years. And now we don't allow camping. Um, we don't allow fires. Um, uh, yeah, so I mean, those are just a couple examples, but I'll keep rolling through here because I don't want to bore you guys with too much um, backstory on this. Um, in addition to saying like what's not allowed, we wanted to be able to 
emphasize what is allowed as well. Um, and this is, you know, I think an important thing for people to understand what they can do, what's allowed on the property. Um, removal of material like firewood, metal detectors. Um, another thing, and Michelle had mentioned this to me, which I, I don't have in here right now, but use of drones, that was a big one. Like if there's a piece of conservation land, can you bring your drone out there and fly it? You know, And again, if there's like a conservation restriction that has for ground nesting birds, like at the, at the, um, uh, sorry, I'm drawing a blank, on the, the la old landfill, there's a conservation restriction to protect birds are we going to allow somebody to go up there and fly a drone around you know like so like a lot of questions um that we may want to address and again that's not specifically in here but we might want to incorporate that or other things conservation restrictions i don't know if the conservation commission's even aware of this but you guys hold conservation restrictions on many properties in the town and it's our responsibility to monitor those properties. That is a very interesting component because it's not really, I mean, when you think about my bandwidth, how much can I really do? Um, we are actually gonna start doing some boundary marking at some conservation uh, for some areas where we hold conservation restrictions um, very soon. So we're trying to, roll this more roll my responsibilities more into this wherever i'm able to we also want to i mean this was a section it occurred to me oh we also hold agricultural restrictions on several properties and again those are early um, aprs that were put in the town's care and so we are going to add some verbiage about that encroachments obviously you guys are aware that we have several places in town where private land abuts conservation land or may abut land where we hold a conservation restriction and there may be encroachments by private landowners say extending their lawns or opening up trails etc from their property to conservation areas so we wanted to address that um, address the liability issue if somebody's injured on conservation land big section on agriculture because we um you know agriculture is a big part of amherst history um and we want to in whatever way we can encourage agriculture and um where appropriate have ag license agreements um and or community gardens so um this is pulled in this ag license policy or ag use policy is pulled in from our directly from our license into this document so that it can be known about by people and more specifically all of these fine points livestock um, structures types of crops that are allowed cover crops length of licenses etc um who can have who can hold a license in town um, signage fees liability insurance all of these very very important things use of pesticides um, terms of use whether they can be waived or changed um, subcontracting that's a big one ag license somebody gets an ag license and they say hey my pal joe wants to come over and you know put something else in here too and subcontracting out to other people we so like all these things that have come out in the wash very similar to looking at our our bylaw regulations it's like things come out in the wash as we have permits come through and where's there a problem and so these are things that we've identified that need to be incorporated Forest management was an element I put in there because in other towns I've worked for, we've done forest management. And that might not be something that we ever do as far as having a forest cutting plan or even a, a forest stewardship plan. But um, that is a potential option in the future if the commission wants to do selective cutting or um, do some wildlife habitat management and um, do some cutting in one of our uh, lands that we manage. Community gardens, a lot of this came from Stephanie Ciccarello, who manages community gardens in town. Um, 
the intent of having community gardens. There's obviously community garden rules and regulations and, and also the community garden circle that has recently been established is also establishing guidelines for organic gardening as well, which we want to roll into this policy. So again, we're it's it's still evolving and we're still trying to get all these pieces compiled together. But as you can see, we're already on page seven. Like this is how <laughs> it's all sort of um, just been, we've been building it and building it. Um, and that's why it's been taking so long. Incorporating information about native plantings <laughs> and, you know, native plantings on conservation areas. Um, Land use applications, uh, getting, and I think this was a really important, this section, license section and lease sections are very important sections, but particularly considering our recent situation with the land use application at Amethyst for us to really define what is the purpose of a land use application versus a license. So if somebody is doing um, something that is a more, um, an event or uh, you know maybe a series of events it might be appropriate to do a land use application whereas if they're actually using the property for an extended period of time like a year or more then a license would be more appropriate um, if they're holding classes there or you know regular regular events for a long period of time not reoccurring year to year uh, would be the purpose of the land use application but recurring year to year would fall into a license category. And then, of course, <clears throat> a link to our land use application, which is now online fully. I can't see if any members of the public are here, Jen. Um, so I don't know like if anybody raises their hand or anything like that. There's nobody here. Oh, OK. It's just us. <laughs> OK. Um, <clears throat> Again, uh, for general licenses, we still have some stuff, some work to do here. Um, like just to give an example, the situation that we ran into with um, with Help Yourself, who they're the folks working um, at Amethyst. You know, as we've as that situation has evolved, it's become really important that we incorporate information about, for example. If you get a permit from the Conservation Commission, you still have to go through other boards and committees in town for your whatever you're doing to be legal. So like if you are having uh, group gatherings out there every day from nine to five, you should have a porta potty so that people have access to, you know, bathroom facilities, things like that. So there's still, you know, little details that we need to incorporate here to make sure that um, those that information is conveyed to people. It's been a long time since I've looked at this. It's been like since mid February since I've looked at this because we've been so crazy with the um, regulations. But I had no idea all this was in here, so this is helpful. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. Um, yeah, the only thing I saw on the SharePoint was uh, just a, a mission statement. <laughs> oh, really? Well, I'm so. Can you see this now that you go in there, or is it not there? I don't know. I switched computers because my other oh, one okay. pooped out. I don't think this whole thing is in there. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't think so. At least it won't. I see like a file, but it looks truncated. Huh. Okay, let me just. It could be. Oh, no, 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 no. Erin, it is. It, it is there? My, it was my fault. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, so, so that's, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> that was a lot, like 20, you know, a lot of me going over it. And I don't want to get you guys to the point of like a glazing over on it right now. I know we've had a very intense week. Um, we also, we have our mission statement, which we started and we, we started to wordsmith it. I don't know if we want to look at that a little bit more while we have say 20 more minutes to our meeting tonight, or if you guys just want to like take this as a general intro, you're welcome to, if you'd like, I can email it to you. You could comment, mark up and send back to me so that I can start incorporating folks ideas and feedback into this document. Um, I think I'm going to vote. Uh, we could. Well, Sorry. Was that you, Andre? Go it ahead. was. Uh, I, I've got a question about the about this. It, I, I 
notice that the mission statement that is on the document that you had before is different. Is that the old one? And now this is the, what you're showing us is the uh, working, the work in progress? Yes, yep. So that was just a placeholder that I put in the um, land use policy document just to get the juices flowing. And we mm -hmm. did, I th and I think it was prior, it was probably in like February sometime, I did bring this to the commission to talk about, but then we got ramped up on several other things. So it sort of fell to the side. Um, but yeah, we'd like to revisit it and continue to make this fit what the commission sees um, as their mission relative to conservation land. And then once it's finalized, I'll pull it into the other document so that it's there. Okay, yeah, I have a couple of additions that I put in it, but uh, this may not be the right um, time to talk about. About it. Yeah, so I was going to say just between the week we've already had and just reading the room um, and also like my own level of ability to give productive feedback right now, I would vote that we, if you can email out mm -hmm. um, both documents and we do markups and get them back to you. Um, and maybe we set a deadline, like a reasonable, feasible deadline for us to do that, Erin, that would be also like not you know feasible and reasonable on your end mm -hmm. um okay but commissioners does anyone is there anything that pops to mind i got a thumbs up from fletcher um good larry seems good with it you okay yeah. with that plan michelle sorry i can't see everyone at once um i've already done some markups on just the mission statement um okay, just like full Disclosure, I'm a total nerd about this stuff because I've been like 15 years in land use management and yeah. all this, so I'm going to have things to say. And also, like, I've been through litigation and defense and enforcement and everything, so, um, and Amherst is my town, so there's a lot going on for me, and I have a thought to think about and, like, digest, but I have just one question for the commission for the, the mission statement, and what I think is so important about the mission statement is that when we like um, evaluate a land use application, I often like lean on, well, what is the mission? What's our mission? And like, what's, are we, one question I have is like, are these um, in order of importance or are they just listed horizontally? So is, is one more than five or, or are these five missions that we hold um, in equal importance? So that's one question I have. And then the second question I have is if one is the most important, it, it, it combines two things, which is, I just wanna point this out while people think about it, to protect and conserve land and water resources and enjoyment of community. So that's like a dual purpose, number one mission. And those things can often come in conflict. So if we decide that this is like a hierarchical statement, one through five, one puts us in conflict and if it's not hierarchical, one is like a beautiful opening mission sentence, but I just want to point out that they can sometimes be in conflict. And it seems like a really simple one paragraph thing, but if we're like in a hard decision and we are like, what is the mission? I'm just going to, we're going to state it our mission. We need something that can like guide us to some clarity. So I'm just going to throw that out there for everybody as you're considering it. Yeah, Michelle. Yeah. So first of all, to your first point, we're looking for you to like lead, <laughs> tear this apart and tell us what we're not thinking about. Um, it's almost like I should kind of cede to you to kind of, I think, facilitate these discussions and figure out how to move this, move through this, because I recognize you have a ton of experience with it and how it can go right and wrong. So thank you for that. The second comment is just when I read this, and this is, again, like, we haven't spent time on this. So Aaron, this is not a thing. But to me, statement one is in conflict. And there's no way we could evaluate land use applications with that the way it is. Um, yeah, we we want to say we're, we're conserving and protecting the land for the health of the environment. But to what extent is that actually for the people of Amherst? And how much do we embrace that? I think it's like very difficult and fundamental. Um, so yeah, agreed, Michelle, we got to figure that out. Yeah, just a quick, uh, just a quick um, thing that could uh, modify it is for the enjoyment of uh, 
uh, current and future generations. And when you do that, then you're essentially looking to um, preserve it or to um, right. yeah, incorporate sustainability for a long time. I think, I mean, I'm just like, as a heads up, I'm probably gonna split things up into people and ecology. And anyway, I just I just wanted some like thoughts from you guys, which Jen, you just gave about if they're hierarchical or horizontal and like, what is the number one mission? Is our number one mission, the land and water? Is Our, our mission is, is that... to help developers work within the confines of the Wetlands <laughs> Protection Act. So, is that the mission? Like, who says that's the mission? That's the Wetlands Protection Act. Well, so Fletcher, but that's not Amherst so that, Conservation Commission. So hold on, hold on. Can I just intervene here? So, and this is a good educational moment. Nine, it was like 1972. The reason conservation commissions were created was for management of conservation land. That was prior to the Wetland Protection Act. So there's two separate pieces of re regulation that the Conservation Commission is charged with. The Conservation Commission is a dual purpose committee charged with care, custody, and control of conservation lands, as well as administration of the Wetlands Protection Act and local wetland protection bylaws. So really, you're both right. But what's really interesting about this conversation is we're dealing with both of these things together in 2022. Like we're dealing with our regulations which we just finished and now we're dealing with this and so it's like this is what like this is exactly why we're having this conversation is getting us all on the same page about what our purpose is so you know kind of on on that same in that same vein and not to uh, dig into it much further than we really want to right now um, one of the suggestions I had uh, as far as wording is uh, to facilitate land use in according with the Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act and the Amherst Wetlands bylaws. To facilitate it, and that's uh, essentially what uh, Fletcher was just saying. Can you say that one more time? Uh, just yeah, so that I yeah, can and I and I can. I'll I'll have it in writing. Uh, it's already here uh, to facilitate land use in according with in accordance with the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Amherst Wetlands Bylaws. Yeah, no, I think that that's a great fusion, you know, because that we look through that lens every single time at everything. And so why would we look through a different lens for land use policy? So I think it's a very, very um, valid thing to include here. Very exciting. And I know that you guys have, have, it's been a very intense week. Like I'm literally ready to call it a week right now. It feels like Friday for me. Um, and I'm sure it does for you guys too. Uh, so I don't, I don't want to exhaust you guys with this right now, but let's, I'll send it to you and you guys can look through it more carefully and um, maybe not at our next meeting on July 13th, but maybe the second meeting in July, we could try to get it on the agenda, but I'll, I'll yield to what you guys think and what the, what the chair thinks. Yeah, I think the July 13, 24th, no, 27th, I can't even add, the July 27th meeting would be a good time to get this in. And, and one more thing, just to let the, the um, juices ruminate a little bit, is that we need another vice chair here um, to be appointed. So to think about who would like to step into that role. Um, yeah. Wow, we lose Leroy? Oh, yeah. I hear that. Yep, we've lost Leroy. Yeah. And we're also gonna be losing Larry very soon. Really, I didn't know. What? All right, dang. I know, major bummer. Yep. What, Leroy move or something? He just couldn't do it anymore. I think he had a, a change in his work schedule, yeah, a pretty significant change, and just making the night meetings was a problem. Sure. But he might come back, you know, um, in the future, just for the time being, he can't. Gotcha. 
so anyways, I don't want to, why don't, if you guys are feeling um, good about just having an initial overview, uh, we don't have to talk about anything more um, on this tonight. I just thank you for making the time this week. It was a very important week and we stepped up and got through two meetings. So that's a lot. And uh, I really appreciate you guys taking the time out of your lives volunteering to do this to help us yeah yeah monumental effort and michelle if there's some way we should structure the way we talk about the the both the mission statement and the land management plan or if there's some way that we can kind of best facilitate getting to a good like productive endpoint on that let me know <clears throat> i don't yeah, know. i think that might be you know, maybe guidance from Erin because she's going to be taking all of these suggestions from everybody. Mm -hmm. Be like, yeah, I don't. That's a tough one since we can't like collaboratively communicate. Um, right, it's hard. It's hard because what would be nice is to pass the document around, right? And be yeah, able to, like, and have lots of time to discuss. Like, I'm still sort of hung up on what Fletcher said, and I'm not sure I have an answer. Yeah. Like, uh, um. So I'll probably be calling you, Erin. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and okay. how how I've handled this in the past, and not necessarily with concoms, but other like you know reviewing papers that need markup, is having everybody incorporate their edits, and then just going through each one and incorporating changes, um, which mm -hmm. you know isn't isn't the most. Uh, we could also schedule a work session too. That's another option. Is like within a given meeting schedule a work session where we go through paragraph by paragraph and make edits and suggested changes where everybody has their markups in front of them and we duke it out you know that's another option um again as i would almost recommend we do that in a special meeting format because i feel like it's better for us to come fresh to discuss something like this yeah. um as opposed to like after having six hearings at the yeah end i just feel like looking at july and I just don't know how we're going to have the time to have the discussion that it needs on, in our normal meetings. Just given that, I mean, really, like, how long can we be productive? Like, two right. hours is a long yeah. time to then do this at the end. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to do the consolidating. And if there are co comments that are in conflict, bringing those to your attention. Um, so we can do it completely offline. But I think that the, the main thing is, like if Fletcher marks it, I send it to everybody. Fletcher marks it up. When he responds, he sends his comments only to me. Jen, you only to me. Michelle, only to me. Everybody, only to me. And then I take those, each of those comments and I incorporate that into a new version. Um, that's the only way we can get through it if we do it offline, which is completely fine. Um, but a couple options on the table anyway. Okay. I mean, I guess... Like just the an idea that comes to mind is is if you make a markup with some like sort of um like philosophical background based on on the mission statement to just incorporate that into your comment with the edit instead of just like redline it so that it's like viewable easily and it's not like a 10 minute discussion it's just there to yeah you know Michelle you you just gave me a little brainchild the other thing is we could create a subcommittee <laughs> Similar to I mean, what we did before. I I think these things are such the backbone of so many things. And like we just were, you know, every every time something difficult comes before us, we can we can come to this and help it, you know, make our decision. This is the same thing as the as the bylaws. So yeah. I'm fine with taking more time to do it. I, I cannot speak to anybody else on this committee, but well, we, we could formulate a subcommittee and have regular Friday at noon meetings uh, twice a month to do this, you know? Uh, we did it once already, we could do it again. And um, that is an option on the table. So we can talk about all these things. You know, we don't have to make a decision tonight, but all okay. on the table for consideration of how you guys want to approach this. I guess I would, I would love to have a, a like a conversation with everybody about the mission statement because mm -hmm. everybody has a lot of ideas about it and it's sort of the basis of everything that comes after it so that's just my two cents okay well so why don't we all individually and respond only to Aaron with markups for now on both the 
plan management plan and the mission statement, like, like Michelle said, instead of just track changes, try to like highlight and add a, com a comment if you have like some rationale that you want to explain for why you're making the suggestion you're making. That way we kind of understand the viewpoint along with the edit itself. Let's get those back to Aaron. Aaron will collate and then depending on, I'll check in with Aaron before our July 27 meeting and see kind of like what, how substantial that is. And then if we can just spend any time we have in the July 27th meeting, just discussing the mission, just discussing the mission statement, we will, um, and we'll go from there. Um, does that sound like a plan? Sounds like a good plan to me. Okay, thanks for keeping this going, Erin, with everything else going on. I frankly don't know how you do it. So. <laughs> I make miracles happen every day. Yeah, you it's know? true. It's, it's true. You know? It's definitely <laughs> true. <laughs> Wetland protection miracles. Um, all right. Well, I think that was it for our agenda for tonight. So unless anyone has any questions or comments, we just need a motion to adjourn and I would see you guys on July 13th next. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Uh, eight to 7.54. Second that. Nice. Uh, um, voice vote, Michelle. Aye. Larry. Aye. Andre. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. I'm an aye. Unanimous. Yeah. Great job, guys. Time for dinner. Good night. See you guys soon. Good night.